so um, here's our third hint video and this is um, going back to uh, this is our percents project and we're going to be discussing how we can find out our monthly expenses so we'll go through this so our monthly expenses are how much we spend on um, how much we spend on our rent combined with how much we spend on our car and gas and then any other luxuries that we like to have on a monthly basis such as our groceries our internet cell phone and things of that nature so um, first thing you want to do is you'll you can use so um, your monthly rent you already have like this number comes from the front side of that page when you're looking at your housing if you have your costs per month whatever number is right here that's your monthly rent so here's our monthly rent and we would place that value right here now for all of these um, or for anytime it says three percent of something we're going to use our percent of our number so for essentially all of these um, or not all of them but a lot of them you will need to use your 2.1 notes because this is saying I need to find 3% of my monthly rent so how do I find that 3% of that monthly rent we'll go back to your 2.1 notes and see how do I find percent of a number and that'll help you start filling in these values now if you have TV or internet well some of us aren't going to get TV and we're just going to get internet so if you have just internet we'll do sixty dollars for just internet so you can make that choice if you want to cut the cord you can instead of paying hundred twenty dollars for TV and internet you can pay sixty dollars for just internet now anything that has a star next to it see the little star right here you do not have to pay for that you can decide not to but something like renter's insurance might be a good idea to have because what if you get robbed then you might want this and trust me uh, um, later down the road there is a part of this project where you have the potential to get robbed and you might lose some of your items but if you have renter's insurance you'll get those items back for um, free of charge whereas if you don't have renter's insurance renter's insurance and you get <clears throat> broken into and things get stolen from your house you have to go back and out and buy those things again so it's important that you you think about this and do I want renter's insurance or not and again since it says percent of something we're going to use that percent use your notes from 2.1 and figure out how do I use um, how do I find the value that I'm going to put here now once you finish this box you have one two three four all five of these values to find a subtotal a subtotal is when I add up all the values in one area so we would add up all these And that number goes right here so once you add up all these values you'll put that one number right there and that's how much you're spending on just your housing so that gives you a subtotal of what your housing is going to cost you now if we move on to our transportation your monthly payment is something you have to figure out um, you'll have to look at it think about it do the math using your transportation so you have <clears throat> in your transportation you know the cost of your car and it says um, it'll typically say how much the car costs for so many years so how are you going to figure out how much a car costs for one month if you know how much it's going to cost you for say six years you're going to have to do the math you're going to really have to think about this to figure out how much your car costs over for one month so once you do that once you find that monthly cost for your car you'll put that number right here now to figure out your gas we need to use the, the fact that we drive about 200 miles per month and how much gas is so this this part gets kind of tricky because this is the price of gas you'll have to look that up find out how much the average price of gas in our town is right now and then if you have 200 miles per month but how much 
gas does your car use? Every car is a little bit different. So that's something you're going to have to think about and figure out. So you'll put, this isn't how much your miles per gallon. That's not what goes there. This is the price of gas currently. So you'll need to use your miles per gallon and this information to figure out how much you're spending on gas each month. Now for your car insurance, you'll have to figure out um, based on how much your car is worth. And that's how most car insurance is based. So you'll take this number and you'll use your 2.1 notes again because we're finding percent of a number. Or you might spend $60, whichever is more. Because typically even if you have a, a car that's not high in value, you still are going to have to spend a flat rate to, for your insurance. So you'll take this percent of a number found in 2.1 and you're using the percent of the entire value of your car, not the monthly value, but the entire value of your car. Say it's a $20,000 car, you would use 0.4% of $20,000. And then you find out how much that is, and if that's more than 60, you use that number. And if it's less than 60, you'll put 60 in there. <clears throat> now here we, from here, and then again, you, to find your subtotal, you'll add these up, and you'll put that number right here. So um, now to figure out our other costs, um, cell phones, we all have cell phones, and it's going to be about $80 a month, so we'll put just 80 right here. Groceries, you can choose how much you're going to spend on your groceries, between 75 and 150 Your student loan is based on how many years of work you've done. So, or how many years of school you need. So you use your years of college right here for that. This is how you figure out your student loan, using your years of college. So if you take six years, you'll have to go back and fill that in using that number right here. So if I went to school for six years, I do 20,000 times six, and then I divide that by 360. This slash means to divide. And then uh, you can have a pet food, and this is the cost of food, monthly food and some any vet services you might need. Remember, this is not mandatory. It's got a star. So if you want a dog, you'll put 40. If you want a cat, you'll put 30. If you want hamster, you'll put 5. And then you have a ski pass, uh, if you want a ski pass, and that's $550 per 12 months. Remember, we're just talking about monthly. So how much, if it's $550 for 12 months, how much would it cost for one month? And you have to fill that value in right there. And then once you find all of these, you'll add them up, and you'll put that number right here. Now, once you have your three subtotals, we have our subtotal for our housing, our subtotal for our, so we'll have a number right here, we'll have a number right here, and we'll have a number right here for our other costs. How am I going to find my total monthly expenses? Well, what should I do with each individual monthly expense, with my housing, my transportation, and my other costs? So you need to figure out what to do with these three numbers, one, two, three, and then once you figure that out, that goes down here at the bottom. So you're using these three numbers to figure to fill out this final number down here. And then once you get that, um, you can ask me and I'll check your work to see how you're doing, make sure everything looks accurate, and then you'll be done with the first day of our project. So we're just trying to get to this for today, and then we're done. So, and then um, on Friday, I'll collect these, and then I'll be grading as we go. So day one, that's what we're doing right now. We will collect, I'll collect them on Friday, get these graded, and I'll return these back to you next week. So hopefully this video was helpful and gave you some hints and some pointers on how to fill out our, our ongoing monthly expenses worksheet. And that way you can see how much you're going to spend every month on just your rent, gas, and things like cell phones and internet.